Hello everybody, Eagle Firefly Gaming here and I hope you are all doing good. Welcome back to this next EVE Online video on the Jackdaw and the PvE build for high sec anomalies. I'll see you in a mo. Hello, so welcome back. So here we are with the Jackdaw. Uh, this is in a hideaway site, a refuge site, apologies, uh, that I have just completed uh, in around about four minutes, I think. This is the Sancha refuge site. So you have two control towers, a platform, and you have waves of basically frigates, destroyers, and there is two uh, cannon towers that you have to destroy. So just having a quick look around here. So the Jackdaw, uh, basically uh, it is not the meta ship to be able to do these, but some pilots are not really skilled into the higher tier stuff. And to be fair, this build is probably a little bit shiny and you could probably do this for a little bit less of what it is. But there is uh, a couple of shiny modules on there. I think there's at least one. Uh, but it gives you basically double the shield rep uh, than you would normally get. So it is quite a tanky little thing. Now, there is a little bit of cap management that you have to do with this ship. So it isn't cap stable. I'm going to show you the fit in a moment. Uh, just having some space mouseness fun, if that's how you like it. Just get some, see if we can get some close-up shots here. So I'm really trying to get the hang of this. And a little bit jittery there. Whoops, that's terrible of me, that. Uh, to try and get some decent cinematic shots. But as you can see, you can really get the mood uh, with the backdrop and then falling away into the environment. So, a little bit of a Space Mouse demo. Uh, one day we'll do a little bit of a t tutorial on that and we will show you uh, how I get some of these shots uh, that you see in the recent videos. Uh, okay, so... Uh, the Jackdaw. So as you can see here, I'm just going to pull up the Fitty window. I'll F. There we go. Uh, we'll close that because we don't need that. So I'll show you uh, at the end of the video uh, one of the sites that you can see uh, me running this. And basically what we've got here is, as you can see, it's not cap stable. Now with implants and various bits and bobs, uh, you can get this cap stable, but it gets quite expensive. So this is the middle road between expensive, tanky, decent DPS and so on. Uh, in the in the refuge sites, you're going to be only needing about 10k range, uh, which we've got 12. When we simulate this with the guidance computer, we get 15 in sharpshooter mode. Uh, some people run this with lights, uh, which is also fine. Uh, the good thing about light missile launchers is that you can pull uh, a decent amount of range and you can basically sig tank. Sig tanking is quite big in the jackdaw. Uh, I wouldn't advise that you take this into a high level mission and get webbed down because you're going to get melted pretty fast, especially in this area of space where the EM damage is quite high. Uh, we're in... Uh, domain at the moment so a Mars space uh, so uh, there's high Sancha presence blood raiders which I think is thermal so we're, we're tanked at the moment to thermal so that we can do the blood raiders missions uh, and the blood raiders anomalies so that's the focus of the next couple of videos that are coming up uh, hopefully if I get some lucky drops if I don't well we, well we'll see where we go RNG and all that jazz so, uh, I'll just go from the top. Uh, we've not, like I say, I've not done this for a while. So, uh, I know a few people have asked me uh, about what sort of fits I'm using at the moment. Uh, this was kind of a throw together, together fit uh, that I kind of had this previously and I've upgraded it slightly. Uh, so, unfortunately, there was no Kaldari medium shield boosters available in Amar. Uh, well, not for a decent price anyway. Uh, so, the Dregaristas uh, still gives you... Um, 95 hit points per second but the the capacitor uh, activation cost is higher and it's just not as good as the Kaldari Navy ones. The Kaldari Navy ones is the best in the faction uh, and then as you move down you're going to be going to your blue officer, the, the blue modules uh, these ones down here 
these ones here with the blue stamp on, not the officer ones, just the dev space ones. Uh, okay, so uh, then we've got the one M afterburner. I had a bit of a toy around with this to see uh, which was better, MWD or Afterbur or Tech 2 afterburner. Uh, you can tweak it with uh, Metaphor, uh, but actually the cap usage is negligible. So uh, you may as well just go T2 all the way uh, just to get you that extra speed when you go into propulsion mode. Uh, Multi-spectrum shield hardener, as you can see here. I'm not too sure if you can see my mouse wiggling around. I think I have it turned off. Uh, and a Gistam C-Type and a Missile Guidance Computer. Now, one of the big things here is you are limited on CPU. So you have to... The Jackdaw doesn't have a massive amount of CPU, so you don't have a lot of utility to play with. Um, so here, down here in the lows, we've got two ballistic control systems. You can have three, but then you get pushed out on uh, CPU. Uh, and then you can trade... Uh, a little bit of DPS for a capacitor power relay, uh, which basically, you know, it's going to give you that extra 40 seconds almost uh, in capacitor time, which really that could mean a lot uh, in a high in a heavy fight. Not that we're going to be getting into heavy fights uh, with these high second anomalies. They're quite straightforward. Uh, the core probe launch at the top, so we can scan down the DED sites. We're going to get into that a little bit more late later on. Uh, now, something that I've not really used before, and I probably should have done, to be honest, uh, I use the capacitor control circuits to boost up my capacitor, and I use overclocking units to get the extra CPU. Now, this module here, this rig, uh, this cell, small semiconductor memory cell, basically it gives you uh, an additional uh, boost to the ship's capacitor. So here, you've got a calculation that goes on here, so this is your total capacitor capacity, which is the amount of capacitor that you have in there. And this is the recharge rate from empty. So if you drained your capacitor completely, it would take 109 seconds to get back to 100%, given the fact that uh, you, if you're not using any modules. So that is your raw uh, recharge rate. Now, the uh, capacitor control circuits here reduce that time. And basically, you can see here what your... Uh, recharge rate net is so here we're negative 22 percent uh when uh, all uh modules are active so we're gonna lose 25 5.1 gigajoules every second if you like uh our modules activated so that's where the calculation of one minute 43 comes in uh, because it works this out here now what your target is here is to get this gigajoules to as close to zero as possible and that's what these modules do here uh, they, this one here gives you a bigger capacitor which gives you more wiggle room uh, and these ones basically uh, reduce your recharge time by 20 percent per module but they're quite heavy on uh, calibration usage which is like your CPU and power grid, if you don't know. Uh, in the Jackdaw, you get 400, and each one of these rigs costs you a calibration, and then obviously you only allowed up to 400. So you have to play around with the rigs to see which one uh, suits you better. If, uh, it, if I had the choice uh, and the Jackdaw had more capacitor, I would be fitting a resistance shield rig in here. So I'm going to tweak around with the fit to see if we can tweak it so that we can have a little bit more resistance profile in there. But this is it. It's 200 million. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, you, there's not a lot, uh, apart from the Hecate, if that's pronounced correctly, uh, you, get, you get serious, insane DPS from a Hecate. Uh, but it's going to cost you a little bit more. Uh, also, you, you know, you've got your Kikimora, you've got the Skybreaker, all these fancy ships that you can use to do these much faster where you're going to churn them out. But if you don't have the skills to do that, then this is a cheaper option. And it's a really, really easy skill train. Uh, not only that is if you're going to get into like likes of the Tengu, it gives you good base skills to get into the Tengu. So, for example, the requirements here, all you need for the Jackdaw is your basically Destroyer 5, Frigate 3, Spaceship Command. You can literally get into this. If you're a new player, you could probably get into this in less than 10 days, I think. Probably. I need to work out 
probably 10 days, seven days, uh, and you straight into this. Train your rockets to level five. So if I show you my skill plan here, we'll just go through this quickly. Some core skills for the Jackdaw. So we've got a spaceship command, which you're going to have to do your Kaldari uh, destroyer level five, uh, which is going to be about seven days. Uh, you can tell this is my uh, skill point farming player, can't you? Never mind. Uh, and additionally, uh, if you go into your missiles, uh, all you need to do here is train your rockets to level five uh, and get your rocket specialization in. Uh, level four is okay. Now, if you have your one million point uh, bonus, or is it one and a half million, uh, you can get into this almost instantly. Like, use all your skill points to do this, and you can get in it within a day or two. Uh, it's, this is really easy to do. So you can do that. Then you've got some important skills, which you've got your your core skills. Uh, you're going to need all your CPU, uh, capacitor management skills, energy grid upgrades. This is where it's going to take time uh, to get into the, the core of the jackdaw because it relies a lot on your base skills. But however, how, having said that, you can get into the ship in a very short space of time and maybe run level two missions if it'll let you in there. Uh, in this i'm not sure i'll check that for you uh, but you can run some of the lower level anomalies and get used to pve uh, and stuff like that you don't have to be flying around in tech one uh, cruiser with really bad skills uh, when you can get into this tech two destroyer tech three destroyer uh, fairly quickly so whilst you're building all those skills up in the background and you if you know me of old uh, you'll know that the Tengu is my my baby, uh, if you like. I, I love my Amar ships as well, but the Tengu is, has always got a place in my heart. So if we just take a look at the Tengu. Uh, Tengu. And then you look at your core skills. You've already got your Destroyer in there that's going to be done. So once you've got your Destroyer 5 done, you can then go into your Kaldari Cruiser, your power grid management if you've done your core skills while you're training your deck jack door that's already done your navigation's already done your shield operations already done so as you can see while you're flying your jack door and earning yourself a bit of isk it's not going to break the bank this ship uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to how it flies to get some isk generation in you can throw it into pochvin uh, you can do some bits in there you have a lot of utility that you can do with this ship uh, so once you've done all that, then you can train your heavy missile stuff and then you can go straight into the Tengu. I would advise anyone that's new to the game is fly what you can afford and try these smaller ships first. You will get a lot of fun out of these smaller ships. For example, I can fly all, a lot of the ships in the game, minus probably a Titan. And I get, I'm get i flying this Jackdaw and having an absolute bucket ton of fun. So... You know, it's not always about flying the best ships in the game. It's also about having a bit of fun uh, and jo enjoying yourself while you're doing it. Uh, you're going to have to do some cap management with it. Uh, so I'll, I'll do a clip at the end. Uh, we'll put some tunes on like we normally do. Uh, just showing you a quick lowdown on how we would do the refuse site or something that I can come up with uh, that I drop on next. Uh, just so you can see me using the missiles, trying to get straight in there in the face. Um, using a bit of transversal, a little, little, all the little bits of things that you can use uh, to give you an advantage. All right, so thanks for watching this fitting section of the video. Please stick around for a bit of music and, and a bit of a jam at the end uh, while we go. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. I will drop the fit in the comments below uh, so you can copy and paste that and do whatever you like with it. Uh, and go from there. Uh, there's not a lot of tweaking to do with this fit, but if you have some tweaks for this fit, uh, let me know in the comments. If I've got something wrong, uh, pull me up on it and let me know. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, thank you very much for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.